Okay, Addis Maximus here. This is doing a video about the Alloy Man and its brother company, sister company, Beihong. These little mini six inch bar, quarter inch link chain, mini chainsaws. The reason I'm doing both of these like this is because I had done a little review of the <laughs> terribly cheesily named Alloy Man uh, half inch impact wrench. Not particularly powerful but really responsive. Good. It was actually a surprising, as far as electronics, a surprising gem for a brushless impact wrench. Came with the four amp hour battery, copied the Waltz hand grip, which means it has good uh, ergonomics. So I said I'll try their little yellow saw here. They had mislabeled it as brushless. When I received it and saw that this had a canned motor in it, I was really disappointed and just told them I wasn't gonna make the video. Uh, because I was under the impression it was brushless. So they offered to send their actual brushless unit, which is this Beihong. Completely different design, but they are indeed advertising brushless on both sides. We'll take a look at it. This, having a can motor, is a bit larger, so it goes down and has a set of bevel gears to drive the chain. The brushless motor is just a lot more power and a more compact size, so they're able to stick it on the side and just have a reduction gear to connect to the chain drive sprocket. I see now why they have it oriented this oriented like this in the case so all the oil will drip to the bottom of the case I recommend putting a rag under it chainsaws or oily we'll try this Pringles can first cut depth isn't super great this is supposed to flip up as your uh, cuttings to uh, Give you more clearance to go through thick stuff obviously this is just a pruning saw but we'll try this piece of wood here see if i can keep this in frame actually seems to have enough power for whatever it's doing. We'll try a full cross section here. It's not a good position. We'll try it like, let me or orientate this. Try full cross section. Seems to have enough power for the given chain size. So it at least has a cutout if you overload it. That's if you're pressing pretty hard, but it actually seems to, once again, have uh, an adequate amount of power. I don't know what uh, kind of, there's my hand, what kind of wood this is, but to tell you the truth, for the little tiny lightweight pruning saw, this will be pretty handy for people. Certainly get the job done if you go easy. I'm sure this brush, this one's more powerful than the brush one. And there we go. I mean, here's my hand. That's significant. I mean, that's like four or five inch, whatever this wood is. I don't know what it is. It's not pine, but whatever this wood is, I mean, you can actually get away with some pretty significant pruning jobs. To tell you the truth, I've always kind of wanted one of these old mini chainsaws, but I knew it had to be brushless to at least have a halfway decent amount of power. It will cut out if you go really hard, but... Uh, just to keep it a little bit easier and it's still a chainsaw it still cuts pretty darn fast And even with the two amp hour batteries, you'll get a fair amount of cuts out of this one more cut for giggles
cut out a couple times there. I don't think I was making that cut completely straight, so probably was causing some binding. It'll probably do better if I put on that other Alloyland 4 amp hour battery just because it'll be less voltage drop because it has cells running in parallel, but I've got a freshly charged battery. We'll see how it does now. Well, there you go for something that you can get pretty darn cheap it actually works out comparing these two it's kind of interesting they both obviously are using like a standardized little six inch bar and quarter inch chain but two different uh, companies design these tools and they both have aspects to them that if they are both combined would actually be a pretty decent little saw as it stands I mean, I'm going to keep the brushless one because it is brushless and I'm going to end up taking apart and just keeping like the bar and the sprocket off this Alloy Man one. They both come with uh, two amp hour batteries and where the impact wrench had the bigger battery comes with a slightly better two amp charger. Slightly better, I should say. These guys, and I had reviewed the Alloy Man earlier and taking it apart and they actually have balanced circuit boards we'll show inside the batteries here uh, they have balanced circuit boards built into the battery so they have basic chargers that just put out DC output and have a temperature monitoring but there's separate uh, temperature shutdown inside the battery as well as a balance controller built in but they have these weird little ports <clears throat> and that's because these cheesy ones have real basic one amp chargers that you actually charge by just plugging into the battery like this. So a little bit cheesy there. The case, both of these come in, you know, pretty basic, just polypropylene cases. Surprisingly enough, the Alloy Man had this huge case where the Bay Hong comes in this smaller case, and that's the case I'm gonna end up keeping just because it's more compact. The cases will accept four amp hour batteries, they even show this tool, all the images are of the 4 amp hour batteries, but it only came with two 2 amp hour batteries. So it's not the worst thing. Other than that, both the sets, they come with safety glasses, uh, some kind of funky looking gloves or different colors, depending on which model you get, um, which I guess is an okay touch. And we'll get into the not so subtle differences between these two saws. Get this one back over here. They both come with an extra chain in addition to the one that's pre-installed. Surprisingly enough, different little baggies. All for the same quarter inch chain, which is a little bit interesting. Is that we have all this different kinds of packaging. They sent an extra couple of chains when I asked for the yellow one. And what I mean by the totally different companies manufacturing these root Chinese companies not the Beihong and Alloy Man is the fact that it's just there's features obviously like on this one it's a brushless motor which I like and the chain oiler is integrated we have a little bottle there and we have the little bubble so as you use it you just periodically hold it upright like this and give it a few pumps to give it get some oil onto the chain these both, you know, they both sound decent. The batteries are intercompatible because it's basically the same company. This one activates real fast just because it's just an on-off switch being just a regular brush DC motor. The battery has a real tight fit on the Beihong one. But being brushless, it actually has a soft start. We'll get to one of the issues which is there's a kind of a fitment issue between the backing washer and the chain drive sprocket which has to be shimmed up and I'm going to show how to do that. So the alloy man, unfortunately to lube the bar, 
you, they ship you this little oil bottle and you just got to periodically hit the bar with oil. However, and which seems kind of weird because like the upper guard is spring loaded and it's just a little bit, a lot bigger and covers more area. But the Bay Hong is just this little flimsy sheet metal thing. So I thought, well, that's better on the yellow one. And the whole chain tensioning thing is much better. We just loosen up the lever here. Turn this counterclockwise to loosen, clockwise to tighten. Don't want to get the chain too tight. And then you lock down the tightening lever again. That's a super simple process. This is a more traditional one where you have this little wrench that it comes with. You have to loosen this bolt. Then there's a tension screw here, which moves the bar in and out. You tension it, then you lock the bolt back down again. So that just seemed curious that the brushless one, both being sold by the same company, still has it's just these odd things with the oiler on this one is just so much better and more convenient where adjusting the chain tension, which you periodically have to do, chains wear and that they uh, stretch, is so much easier in the alloy man. I don't know why they didn't have this system on the nicer brushless saw. The brushless saw is a little bit lighter weight. And as we can see, it's overall just a bit more compact than the brushed version. And they come with these like cheesy little screwdrivers. Other than that, I guess we could take a look inside the batteries here. And here's the both batteries internally, same purple cells, exact same balance board. As we can see, it has a microcontroller, which does have a bunch of elastic around it. Uh, I guess the prevent issues with its connections. We've got like either some power diodes or transistors um, to manage like the battery cutoff, the round charging port, as well as being able to charge normally, the temperature output. So this, what they do is it's, it used to be the Chinese manufacturers just, I even have an old Harbor Freight Earthquake XT, which has no balancing, but it turns out that it kills batteries so fast by not balancing out the cells that, uh, pretty much all, even the cheapest manufacturers now, it's cheaper for them to include nicer balance controllers in the batteries than it is to replace batteries all the time. So this is becoming a standard. They just have cheap chargers, which you just put out a DC voltage, and then they just, the whole charge con and balance controllers just all integrated into the battery, which at least is something, at least they are balanced charge, which will help to a degree. But like the others, like we can see here, on that impact wrench there's the temperature sensor but it's just kind of like floating in air when it should really be like stuffed right in between the cells so it actually gets a better temperature reading and so that's just a you know something i and the fact that there's like this is capped on tape which is a high temperature electrically insulating tape that's why you always see it inside electronics so what i've been doing is just peeling that off getting at the little temperature sensor and putting it in a better place where it'll really get a better feel for the the where the battery is so what I've been doing is I've been taking them my fingers would cooperate here there we go so you can see what I do is I just stuff it down in there like that so it's actually making physical contact it's right in between two cells so it will be more reactionary and get a better reading rather than kind of floating in air right here where the cells actually can get pretty darn hot before the airspace around it is enough to trigger the sensor versus it even without you know thermal paste just being in between two cells like that's going to be better off we're tailed, tear down the alloy man, and then we'll take a look inside the Bay Hong. And since I gotta put a shim washer in this anyway to fix up one of its issues, but since I'm not even gonna test out the alloy man because uh, it's cheesy, and I requested it based on the fact that it was brushless when indeed it's not. So I'm just keeping this thing for parts. So what we have here is a little cam 
which interacts with this nub and that's when you twist this this little ramp pushes against this nub to push out the bar it's actually a pretty smart little design interestingly enough on the Beihong, you can see they actually the gears revert or the sprockets reverse. So they have a washer, so it's fully captured on the chain. Or on this one, it's open, which I find kind of peculiar that it's open right here on the top. Don't really understand that. And you just pop it off, and here's the bar. This bar would be, I am sure, exactly the same, and it does appear to be exactly the same as it is on this tool. The only thing I'm kind of curious about, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm wondering if I can't swap this easy adjust chain tension setup here into this. The little bracket here, pop off the chain. This little bracket is actually just screwed onto the bar. And as we can see, they, they are indeed precisely the same. Uh, just absolutely exactly the same bar so I'll keep this bar as a minimum to keep the bars a spare because that's really what wears is sprockets and bars in addition to the chain too bad this piece is totally different so there's no way to really adapt it to uh, work on this one which is unfortunate because this is actually kind of a cool way to do the adjustment simple snap ring sprockets keyed on it's a double flat system so known as a double d and if i can find my flashlight we can indeed see that they do have one ball bearing down there we'll see if there's two one on the front one on the back side but you can see this was just flipped up and just sitting like this without a washer that's actually a tighter fit on this this one or on this one, we can actually see, surprisingly enough, that is a different drive sprocket. This one's taller and wider. This one's narrower, but you can see the issue that I'm having is there's just way too much clearance in there. And the chain kind of wants to ride right down to the gap. Of course, how chains are driven is just right against these little sheet metal tabs and it can cause that there's enough gap for those tabs to want to kind of get caught up right there even though this washer is supposed to help it hold in place so i'm going to end up having to shim that so it ends up holding down same size double d shape to drive both of these but this is just so much taller that it wouldn't fit even without the washer i'm going to keep it anyway because it is taller and so the solution and it is centered metal it's going to be pretty darn hard steel in order to have a decent lifespan but I can keep it as a replacement. It'll just take some work with a belt sander or grinder to grind it down to where it's thin enough to fit in place of this one. Here's the upper blade guard. Here's the clock spring. It actually has a little steel insert. And a zillion screws. What I'm counting is one, two, three on this side. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen screws. Before I forget to mention it, the oiler on the Beihong comes out right through, too much shadow, you can see the end of the hose there, so what that does is fills up this little area with oil, gets in through this hole which is exposed to the inside of the bar, and that's how it's oiling. The other thing is this one is entirely relying on the battery, the temperature sensor in the battery to provide and control board inside the battery to provide protection. With the brushless one, actually the controller is also monitoring the temperature, which is providing an additional layer of safety. So it is more advanced electronics than the brushless one. Screws are not all the same length, so you're going to have to keep track of all 15 of them. Surprisingly enough, these are both advertising 26 feet a second as a chain speed does have this kind of finger guard which makes it a little bit more bulky but I suppose that's okay I think I got all the screws out of here which is 
absolutely nuts how many screws there were. And this thing is pretty tight. Work this casing off on most tools. The side that comes off, most, 95% of them, but not 100%. Just want to mention that. But 95% of tools, the side that you pull the screws out of is the side of the case half that you lift off. And everything sits in the side that the screws thread into. We indeed actually have a, well, there's the front side ball bearing. Surprisingly enough, it's a separate piece to hold on the battery right here. And that must just be to, because of the complexity of this mold. Pull that out. Here's the other part of the battery case section. As we can see, this is just one heck of a simple setup. We have a piece of plastic which acts as a guide. This motor is just a real simple, you know, fan cooled, brushed, pretty decent sized brushes. You ought to get a halfway decent amount of lifetime, but we have a sleeve bearing on the back. But at least nicely on the front, we can see that they do indeed have a ball bearing where there's more load. We can see the angle of the teeth there, so it is a, uh, it's not a bevel gear. They're just right angle helical cut gears. This whole plastic thing is to hold out bearing support. I'm assuming that, I wonder if there's actually two bearings. They still have the bearing on the motor, and then they just add this one as a extra one to support the loads. And the only protection that this thing has is if you run it too hard, this is a little thermal switch. So what ends up happening is you run, run it too hard, the thermal switch will overheat and cut out. And then over time it will cool off, re-engage, and then you can use it again. And it's just using a simple, you know, off-the-shelf micro switch. I mean, it is a real basic design. As far as the grease, I did want to mention that it is clear. It doesn't even look like wheel, lithium grease. I mean, it looks like whale fat. And indeed, what they've done is they put a ball bearing in the support. And this is just machine for the gear that's press fit over the motor arbor. You have to use a puller to pull this off, like a gear puller. And it, they still have the normal sleeve bearing in the motor. They're just doing that to add extra support because the sleeve bearing would probably just destroy itself under the kind of loads that a, something like a chainsaw like this would go on. It exhibits. I wonder if there's a way under the sticker to pop this gear out. No, there isn't. I'll we'll have to pry that out. Not a good sign here. Actually, well, what was a good sign is this bearing feels just fine and it actually just slid off pretty easily. So at least I have a 6001 rubber seal bearing. It does indeed have a bearing on the back side. So this gear, that's the main spindle, is pretty well supported. But listen. There's already something wrong with the bearing, the brand new, the back bearing. Indeed, the back bearing is a little 608 skateboard wheel bearing. Kind of hard to hear, but I can feel it. It already has some kind of little notching in it, which is a disappointment. Defective bearing from the factory. We can see the little keyway right there. So this key gear, it's not just friction. It actually has a, in this case, it would be a half moon key to mechanically connect the gear to the shaft. So at least that design's okay. The gears are small, but... At least it did have ball bearings on both sides of the shaft, ball bearing on the front of the motor, and they're not bevel gears, they're just helical right angle gears. As you can see, the teeth are flat, they're not tapered as on the motor. They are straight, not tapered. So that's the teardown of that one. So let's take a look inside the brushless one, which is not going to have bevel gears because, of course, the motor's right there. It's just going to have a set of spur reduction gears. Moving on to this one, I have a little collection of washers, some tools I took apart, take apart, had, and it just come into handy. All these little washers are so many times fixing ratchets and other tools, shimming things up, like this Harbor Freight 7-inch Bauer grinder I just did a video on. Found another washer that happened to be just the right thickness. And just the right diameter so it fits tight around this and doesn't slide back and forth. 
Now I've shimmed this up and now that gear can't move back and forth in and out. So there won't be a gap developing right there. So that's the one thing I did have to modify here. Let's tear this down. Should mention this odd little thumb screw here, I think is to hold the wrench, but the wrench doesn't actually fit all the way through. It just, just the end of it does. So like how lame is that to have an area to hold the wrench but the wrench is just sticking way out. It's just uh, ill-designed, and so I'm just not even going to keep this wing nut in there because it doesn't do anything. And I'm going to end up actually swapping positions. It seems that the washer or the chain wants to ride more towards the inside of the tool, and this washer is not going to be as hard as this centered steel, so when I reassemble it, I'm going to actually have it go like this instead. Mercifully, all the screws are actually the same length. This plastic actually seems like uh, it's higher quality, a little denser than uh, the Alloy, Alloy Man brand one. Well, there goes our wrist strap. And once again, real clear grease. So like it's whale fat, I'll be upgrading that. And pretty simple, there's a little nut for that little screw that I'm not keeping, that wing nut that I'm not keeping, this thing. Pull that out of there, it'll save like a couple grams of weight on this tool. And here's a little pump and tube reservoir for the oiler and surprisingly enough there's a whole like internal housing for the motor and drive gear which is kind of interesting they're not relying just on this outer housing we can see that uh, they weren't lying about being brushless we do have our big brushless controller here of course, multiple wires. This is not going to be a censored motor because it runs at a fixed speed, but it is indeed going to be brushless. There are three wires for the three phases running up to the motor. And since it's not variable speed, it doesn't have a bunch of different wires coming out of the trigger switch. All this is doing, well, we have a lockout, is simply turning it on and off. And this actually just seems like an AC trigger. I will say I'm surprised it actually has screw terminals for the wires, which is a lot easier to deal with. And this is indeed an AC rated trigger switch, a 10 amp, uh, 125, or excuse me, 12 amp at 125 volts, 10 amps at 250 volts. It's actually a, and it has some like intermittent, oh no, that's just a different rating down there. That's really surprising though. That is a very high rated trigger switch this must have been what was available on the shelf for the right price but that's uh, astounding that they would include such a high amperage trigger switch where the other one where the trigger switch actually had the the alloy man actually had the power the, the full current of the motor passing through a little micro switch this is using a much better trigger switch yet it doesn't have the full current of the motor it all it's doing is just telling the brushless controller driver here to go there we go all it's doing is just activating the controller and they're using it so definitely a higher quality unit so now I think we this thing should be pretty basic right we just pop it out like so there we go I see, so the motor's screwed in. So here's the little housing. And rotating this, I can easily feel that there's a ball bearing on the back side. And this is a 6000 RS, so actually a slightly smaller bearing on the front, but this gear is still nonetheless ball bearings on both sides. And the brushless motor indeed has a larger bearing on the front and a small little ball bearing on the back, which does feel good. And we know it's brushless because, of course, there is no commutator or windings on the rotating part here. Very strong magnets inside this thing. 
really those are going to be rare earth magnets and so the advantage to a brushless motor so you have to have a controller to turn on each pair of windings in a circular fashion one after the other in order to make the motor rotate but of course you have higher field strength much more compact motor um, because you have such stronger magnets in here so you just get a small motor with a lot of power and this is probably still more powerful than that big old can motor which was twice the size of this so at least they're not lying about it being brushless a couple screws to hold the field down as we can see no sensor wires I think these gears these are the centered steel gears um, are can be very very hard and actually I like the diameter of this thick teeth I actually suspect that you should get a decent amount of life uh, out of this little gear set here pop this out just to show that once again we have a 608 a skateboard wheel bearing although this one feels like it's in much better condition than the other one and another little centered steel gear pretty much what you would expect it's nice that both the motor and the gear have two ball bearings so they ought to stay real straight and won't have any issues there one surprising omittance, I was like, well, I pulled this out and I didn't remove two screws there. But we actually have bosses for screws. So when they had assembled this, the screws here go all the way through the case. The screws here go all the way through the case. The extra two screws on top here, those, this, this screw here and here, both screw into there. But even though they have a provision for this to be screwed into the internals, they didn't. So I'll actually be, you know, since I have all these other screws here, I'll take a couple of the short screws. That's not a short screw. From the other tool, and it will actually screw this down to the body. They must have decided that, well, either they just, during manufacturing, failed to put in the two screws here. Or at some point they decide that they were just redundant and totally unnecessary the way this keys in over these bosses anyway they saw it in the way the halves come together uh, it was just unnecessary but I'm gonna add them makes it just a little bit more secure and robust by extremely tiny amount but nonetheless why on earth would you include provision to screw down essentially the gearbox the inside of the of the housing and then not do it if there's ever going to really be a failure mode to this, the soldering of these wires right there to the, the motor wires to the controller isn't the best. Fortunately, there's actually like an inch of extra wire, so it shouldn't be a problem just to, if they ever fatigue on you, just to strip them and re solder them. And there you have it. So. Cheesy tool, kind of a cheesy, overly long video because of the double teardown. But I've always kind of wanted one of these little brushless, uh, cordless pruning saws just because, you know, using a, uh, I mean, a lot of saws are fast bow saws and even using reciprocating saws. A lot of people use recip saws just because they're a little bit safer. But something that's just convenient and lightweight, you know, if you get a brushless, uh, mini six inch chainsaw, you know, all sorts of companies, Makita and Milwaukee, a lot of professional manufacturers also um, make these kind of tools, and those will certainly be better. But if it's something you only use occasionally, why not, you know, to tell you the truth, this little guy actually seems reasonably decent. I mean, you want to make sure to not torque this nut too much because it can pull the bolt through the plastic. And they should have put more grease along the gears. I did add more grease when I had this apart. But just having a convenient little oiler like that so you can periodically give it more oil. And the speed at which it works. You can't push it too hard. But that was, you know, a 4 or 5 inch um, piece of whatever wood that was. That was definitely pretty dry. Which makes it a little bit harder to cut. I did get it to stall out a couple times. But... You know, the chains are super cheap on these. You know, like five bucks or something. Seven bucks or something. Eight bucks with shipping. But the six inch rated quarter inch length, link, link, length 
chains are actually pretty common and I actually found that you can get some a lot better ones and then these just these cheesy kind of Chinese ones but it's just small and compact and and even going a little bit easier on it uh, still cuts pretty darn fast and technically it is true if you really want to go at it you know you could take down something you know a tree that's 10 inches or more in diameter about 10 inches they're kind of fudging it a little bit with the six inch length even though that's a standard because obviously we've got about five inches from the housing to you know it can cut to the tip and if you do that you get about five and a half inches but realistically to the flat where the curvature starts at the end of the bar you got five inches so that would be a 10 inch tree if you you know cut through one side and then cut through the other but nonetheless you could technically do it with a tool like this anyway sorry for the cheesy video we'll be back to the more normal stuff um next video appreciate everybody who's been watching see you next time